Good morning, and welcome to our third Sunday of Easter. If you'll go ahead and stand with us, let's all sing Lift Up Your Hearts 624. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. And may the grace and peace of our Lord Jesus be with you all. We gather in this Easter season, and one of the poignant realities of Easter is the powerful faith we have in the power of Jesus' resurrection. It's particularly pertinent to us as a parish community this week and next week as we're celebrating the lives of several members of our community who have died recently. And most of all, today, especially, we want to remember Deacon Tom's mom, who died suddenly on Friday. Her husband, Bill, is here. Her, husband, her brother, son, Jim, is here. We just like to gather their family and so many other families into our hearts, into our faith, and praying that the power of new life will touch us all. And conscious that at times we are fearful, at times we doubt, at times we struggle, as a community, we pray with hope. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sin, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill.
Let us pray. May your people exult forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers, has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the holy and righteous one and asked that a murderer be released to you the author of life, you put to death. But God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand, through the mouths of the prophets, that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord. you released me have mercy and hear me know that the Lord works wonders for his faithful one the Lord will hear me whenever I call him Lord let your to my heart a greater joy. In peace I will lie down and fall asleep. For you alone, O oh Lord, make me dwell in safety. Lord, let your Shine. 
A reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous one. He is expiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. The way we may be sure that we know him is to keep his commandments. Those who say, I know him, but do not keep his commandments are liars, and the truth is not in them. But whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in them, in him. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified, and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, Have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, These are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the Law of Moses and in the Prophets and Psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations, beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you. If we were to study in chronological order the content of the scriptural passages we've just heard this morning, we would begin with our gospel from Luke, 
And then we would go to the first reading from the Acts of the Apostles, and finally our second reading from the first letter of John. And it's interesting that throughout these three readings, the thematic of repentance and expiation of sin shows up in them all. How amazed the apostles were to hear about the surprising encounter the two disciples had with Jesus on their way to Emmaus, only to have Jesus suddenly appear to all of them in the upper room where they were gathered. After they acknowledged their initial fright, they must have felt guilty and embarrassed for abandoning Jesus when he was crucified. And they must have wondered how he suddenly could be there in their midst, given their locked doors. Jesus, understanding their fear and amazement, first proves that he's human by eating with them, and then opens their hearts and minds to his resurrected life and their own mission to preach repentance, forgiveness, and hope, the very gifts that he is giving to them. We see that mission lived out after Pentecost when Peter, no longer burdened by his own betrayal of Jesus, courageously preaches Jesus' message of repentance and forgiveness for those Jesus had condemned to death. And then in John's first letter, we also hear this same message of forgiveness and our call to live faithfully Jesus' commandment to love. Now, while these readings and their message are very familiar to us, they also challenge us this Easter season to reflect on our own need for healing and forgiveness and courage. Over Lent, I, like several others in the parish, was reading Jesuit James Martin's new book, Come Forth, The Promise of Jesus' Greatest Miracle, which in wonderful detail unfolds the story of Jesus bringing his closest friend Lazarus back to life. In the final chapter, Martin writes, all of us come before God unfree in some way. All of us have things that we need to let die to follow God more freely, to love more deeply, and to become people that God desires us to be. And God has an intense desire to set us free, to offer us new life. In the New Testament, he writes, the constant movement of Jesus is freeing people from sin, from illness, from isolation, from despair, and from darkness. Let me repeat. All of us have things that need, we need to let die to follow God more freely, to love more deeply, and to become the people God desires us to be. And precisely because of the Easter joy and freedom that we've been given and celebrate, this is a most appropriate time for us, strengthened by that joy and hope, to review our lives to see what we need to let die so that we can love more freely. Where might Jesus be giving us hope and strength to release the hold that our fears, our resentments, our anger, our self-focused sinfulness have over us so that we can live healthier and more generous lives? Jesus is inviting us, as he did his apostles, to come out of our locked rooms, our self-imposed jails, those hidden hurts that we have nurtured, so that we can live in the hope and the joy of his resurrection. With our own deepest selves, and with whom else might we need to be reconciled? Can we let the light of Jesus' resurrection and the power of his compassion free us like it freed Peter who denied Jesus three times so that we can become great apostles ourselves as well? And now especially with all the changes facing our St. Leo community and our archdiocese in the months ahead, collectively can we let the Holy Spirit lead us forward not only with peace and hope, but with active discernment, bold courage, and graced creativity. Let us be witnesses, as the early apostles were, to the power of Jesus, which is healing us 
and leading us into new life for the sake of our troubled and fearful church and world. Amen. Please stand, and this morning let us say together the Apostles' Creed, which is on the second page of your hymnal, upper left. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. And from there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. And now let us take our prayers to the Lord in hope. And as I mentioned earlier, we have lost recently four members of our faith community. We're going to be remembering them in our prayers, and I'm going to recap, or Bob will, with our announcements, a bit of the announcements around their funerals to be celebrated this week and beyond. As hearers of God's word, that we might be bearers of Jesus' mercy, compassion, and healing love in our homes and in our world, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That the faithful of the Archdiocese of Seattle might discern how Jesus is calling all of us to new responsibilities and leadership for the future of our church, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those in our community who are homebound or in hospital, especially Madison Meadows, niece of Rosemary Eldred, who is critically ill, and Jim Trunk, son of Tom and Roseanne, who's having surgery on Tuesday, that our gracious God bless them with renewed health and peace. Let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us pray for those in our community who have died recently. For Dominican sister Peg Murphy, whose funeral will be celebrated here at St. Leo this Wednesday, April 17th at 1210. For Francisca, Franciscan sister Jude Connolly, whose vigil will be here on Thursday night at 6 p.m. and funeral liturgy will be celebrated Friday at the 1210. For Carol O'Laughlin, mother of Deacon Tom, who died suddenly on Friday evening, her funeral will be celebrated here on Friday, April 26th at 1210. And for Gilda Warden, who also died suddenly last week, and whose funeral will be celebrated on Thursday, May 2nd at 1210. In thanksgiving for the lives of these faith-filled women and for the consolation of their families, religious communities, and many friends, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Let us now take our personal needs to the Lord in silent prayer. For all of our individual intentions, let us pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious God, as the communion of saints has grown considerably in this last few weeks, we thank you for the lives of those whose faith inspires us. May we also be an inspiration to others because of how we live and what we believe. Through Christ our Lord, amen.
pray, my sisters and brothers, that our sacrifice will be acceptable to Almighty God. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church. And as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. And may the Lord be with you. And let us lift up our hearts. And let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, and in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true Lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying he has destroyed our death, and by rising restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. <clears throat> Are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving you thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by your Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout our world and bring her to the fullness of charity together with Francis, our Pope, Paul, our bishop, and all those who minister in your name. Remember also our sisters and brothers who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light 
depth of your face. And have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. For it is through him and with him and in him in the unity of the Holy Spirit that all glory and honor are yours, almighty God, forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom and the power and the glory are yours now and forever. And Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. My brothers and sisters, may the peace of the Lord be with you all. Let us offer one another the sign of Christ's peace. Peace and hope come. Blessings. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, and blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. And may the body and the blood of our Lord Jesus bring us all to life everlasting.
Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain the incorruptible glory of your resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. As usual, please take uh, home a bulletin um, to stay abreast of everything that's going on. And there's always a lot going on, it seems. Uh, today, uh, Faith Formation families with 4th uh, through 6th grade youth receiving First Communion. Um, after the closing song, you'll proceed over to the BICS to sign up for a class. Also, families meeting for information regarding infant baptism uh, also head over to the BICS for sign up. So the BICS is the sign up place this morning. Uh, next weekend is the fourth Sunday of the Easter season, also known as Good Shepherd Sunday. Uh, families, if your children have a toy stuffed lamb, please bring it to the 930 Mass. I think the more lambs we have, the happier Father Elias is. <laughs> I don't know if we'll have any live ones. Um, this is uh, a critical time uh, for parish leadership, of course, and the upcoming weeks will begin the nominating process for the St. Leo Parish Council. There'll be some information about this uh, in the parish bulletin, but there are in your pews uh, some of these little beige cards, and if you wanted to get a head start on this, you could submit nominations um, even today after Mass. So uh, we have ye old wooden box back there, but we also have a bedazzled box next to ye old wooden box, and that's where these go, okay? <laughs> um, there will be another round of Bunko on Saturday, April 27th at 3 o'clock in the Bix. All adults, St. Leo parishioners are invited, and snacks will be provided. Okay, so finally, uh, a recap of the funeral information. There are two this week uh, for Dominican sister Peg Murphy on Wednesday at noon, and then for uh, Franciscan sister Jude Connolly on Friday um, at the 1210 Mass. Um, there will be a vigil the night before uh, the funeral, the day before the funeral, which is a more informal uh, gathering for prayer. It's just part of the whole funeral rite, uh, some storytelling, things like that. Sister Peggs then will be on uh, Tuesday, um, and that will be up at the St. Joseph residence in West Seattle at 3 p.m. Uh, but folks are willing to attend, or uh, welcome to attend that. Um, S uh, Franciscan Sister Jude Connolly's vigil will be here in the church Thursday night, um, and then the funeral on Friday at noon. The funeral then uh, the following week for Carol uh, O'Loughlin, Deacon Tom's mom, will be here on Friday, April 26th at the 1210 Mass. And then finally, uh, the funeral for parishioner Gilda Warden will be the week after that, Thursday, May 2nd, um, also at the 1210 Mass. Let us thank God for the wonderful gift that all these women have been to the St. Leo community. So as you heard, next Sunday is the Feast of the Good Shepherd. And kids, I didn't have a stuffed lamb when I was a child. I had a stuffed teddy bear. I think God will be acceptable. It will be acceptable if you bring teddy bears as well as lambs in case you don't have one. <laughs> may the Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless us, God, who is Father and Son and Holy Spirit. Our Eucharist has ended. We go in peace and in hope.